Praise the Lord. If you knew what we were a part of downstairs, you might or not want to come upstairs. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Having pre-service prayer downstairs, it's awesome when you know the presence of God. And I'll tell you, it's something. Praise the Lord. I got to tell you, we're here. You've heard me say it before, but we're here for the audience of one. We're here to worship God in spirit and in truth. And we're here to, to worship a risen Savior. Shout of praise. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Easter Sunday morning. Pastor Ron wants me to read this scripture, Matthew 28. Early on Sunday morning, as the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to visit the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake. Are you expecting that this morning? <laughs> Hold on to your seats. For an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone, and he sat on it. His face shone like lightning, and his clothing was as white as snow. The guards shook with fear when they saw him, and they fell into a dead faint. Then the angel said to the women, Don't be afraid. I know you're looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He is risen from the dead, just as he said would happen. Come, see where his body was lying. And now, go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead, and he's going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Remember what I have told you. So the women ran quickly from the tomb. They were very frightened, but also filled with great joy. And they rushed to give the disciples the angel's message. And as they went, Jesus met them and greeted them. And they ran to him, grasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go tell my brothers to leave for Galilee, and they will see me there. Hallelujah. Pastor Ron and I, a year ago... <clears throat> stood in that empty tomb in Jerusalem. He wasn't there. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's still not there. He's in heaven. And one day soon he's coming for us. Let's stand this morning and worship. We welcome those who are online with us this morning. In your homes, just enter in. Worship the Lord. He is worthy of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today, he walks with me and talks with me along.
Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Oh, 
from the dead Jesus, dwells in us. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Lord. Thank, you, Thank Lord. you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Bless you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Bless you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Bless you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, why don't you go ahead and lift your voices and Hallelujah. just say, Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Lord. Thank you. Bless the one 
bless your name, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you that you sent your only begotten Son to die on the cross for us. That those who believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We bless you, O Lord. Thank you. We bless you, O Lord. Hallelujah. I'm kind of in awe, on awe of his goodness, eh? Bless his holy name. <clears throat> Just a couple of announcements this morning. What an awesome night we had Friday night. Praise the Lord. And uh, you can watch it on, on Facebook. We had a little problem with one of the microphones, but we're going to get that fixed up for the audio so you can hear the whole thing. But God is so good, so faithful. We had four that were baptized in water, and uh, it was exciting. It was uh, The presence of God was just so heavy. As of last night, we had almost 1,500 viewers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so when you share it, it just gets out there. It goes and goes See, and goes. we just sang, you have done great things. He yes. has done great things. And I have to tell you, there's more in store. Amen. Amen. And if you will reach out, the Bible says, they that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. Thank you. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank Hallelujah. You, Just a reminder, uh, we do have the April calendar in the slots at the back if you have not picked one up. Uh, and our regular services, 1030 Sunday mornings. We have an online Bible study Wednesdays at 2 p.m. And our prayer meeting, that's where we do God's business, is 6 p.m. on Wednesdays. 
And uh, our Filipino service is Friday evenings at 6.30. It's exciting. And uh, if you want to join with us for that, you, you can do that. Praise the Lord. And uh, this morning we have uh, special stories. We're going to uh, just do a, a little interview with three different individuals. And the first one I want to call on is Cameron. If he would come. <coughs> Get your microphone. And so the question that we're, there's two questions we're asking each one this morning. And the first one is, how did you come to faith in Christ? Briefly. And then the next question is, how has the resurrection affected your life? So hold that up close so they can hear you. I guess the best thing my dad ever did for us when we were children. I guess the best thing my dad ever did for us when we were children, we, he, uh, he used to gather us in the kitchen like in the mornings and and just read to us the Bible, you know. And uh, well, when I was about 27, my dad died, so I I got alone with God down in the woods one day. And that's where I gave my life to the Lord. <laughs> he got a hold of me. So how has the resurrection of Jesus Christ affected your life? Well, <laughs> um, he, well, he really, you know, I, I couldn't live without him. No. I, so he's, I, not, I, he's not some dead God? I'd rather be with him than I would with people. <laughs> Don't take that the wrong way. <laughs> so he's alive, right? Yeah, he is. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. So you, you love to be with him yeah. all the time. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Well, we're glad you do come, come away from him to join us once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. So anything else? used to talking. <laughs> <laughs> well, praise the Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Cameron. Thank you. We appreciate it's, your... If there's anything people want to do, and they want to get along with God, and he, can, he can move mountains in your life. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Cameron, it sounds like to me that you know he's alive yes. because you've been talking to him. Praise God. That's why we pray to him, because he's alive. Yes. That's why we talk to him. Yeah. And I appreciate this man. He comes out for prayer, and I'll tell you what, he just gives her when he starts praying. <laughs> and, and, and it's a wonderful thing to have that connection with God. I just thought I'd put that in there. <laughs> Praise God. Praise the Lord. I like it when, he, you when, when, you, when, you, when we talk to him. Because that's what, it, what helps us. To, I mean, we can talk to him. But when he talks to us, too, that lets us know he's alive. Amen. Glory to God. Just saying. And the next person that's going to share this morning is John Harris. The same two questions. How did you come to faith in Christ? <clears throat> and what does resurrection mean to you? First of all, good morning, everyone. It's good to see everybody in the house of the Lord. It's, uh, this is a wonderful, wonderful place. Get up close. Uh, up. Up. <laughs> did you say 
but no. Don't eat it. Don't eat it. <laughs> anyway, uh, I came to know the Lord. Uh, well, actually, he came at me. <laughs> Pulled me out of the sewer. And, uh, December 20th, 1996. Um, again, I was working away someplace. And anyway, the uh, Lord said, it's time that you come into the fold. I knew what he was talking about. I just didn't uh, really want to surrender at that time. However, uh, due to a number of circumstances, um, he brought me in. Thank you, Lord. Thanks, the Lord. And so, uh, so thankful for that day. And uh, it's been quite a journey ever since, actually. It's, uh, as Cameron had mentioned earlier, um, when you get along with God and you're talking with him, and he talks to you, there's, that's no greater uh, relationship than you can have on this planet. It's just uh, something just amazing. It's just an amazing thing to have. Um, the resurrection. When I first was presented this question, I thought, hmm. Um, I really had to go deep because it, it's like breathing to me. Um, I don't really remember this, but they tell me when I was born, the doctor picked me up by the heels and <laughs> swatted me on the butt, and I gasped for air. <laughs> and ever since that day, I've been, <laughs> I've been breathing air. Uh, the resurrection to me is like breathing air. When it comes into you, when the Holy Spirit comes into your body and works in you, and you allow him to work through you, then everything has a whole different light on it. Right. Your whole world changes. Right. So I am so thankful for that opportunity that uh, the Lord gave me. And on this Resurrection Sunday, the same resurrection power that raised Jesus from the dead is still alive and working all around the world today. Hallelujah. So, Hallelujah. Thank you. So, anyway, um, that's all I'd like to say. But anyway, <laughs> again, nice to see everybody in the house of the Lord. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, John. And Pastor Beatrice Hope is going to share with us she has been pastoring in Labrador, came to Woodstock for a rest. And the Lord has just been working in her heart. We want her to share how you came to faith and then what resurrection means to you. Thank you. Um, he is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Um, I have so much to tell, so I hope I can, I'm allowed I'm allowed a lot of time. <laughs> anyway, the Lord has done so much for me. I, I must, first and foremost, I must thank God for all he has done for me in my life. Without God in my life, I really don't know where I would be. Um, Jesus has healed me mentally, emotionally, spiritually. Um, from the beginning of my life, um, like I was in this pit and Jesus took me from that miry pit um, but I'd like to before I talk about like the resurrection life I have to, I'd like to tell you why I needed new life in Jesus and it was a very dark time for me but uh, before I like to tell my testimony um, I'd like to sing this hymn that really describes my life in Jesus. I would love to tell you what I think of Jesus Since I found in him a friend so strong and true I would tell you how he changed my life completely He did something no other friend could do 
No one ever cared for me like Jesus. There's no other friend so kind as he. No one else could take the sin and darkness from me. Oh, how much he cared for me. All my life was full of sin when Jesus found me. All my heart was full of misery and woe. Jesus placed his strong loving arms about me. And he led me in the way I ought to go. No one ever cared for me like Jesus. There's no other friend so kind as he. No one else could take the sin and darkness from me. Oh, how much he cared for me. Well, at the beginning of my life, um, we lived in a small community. My parents, uh, like they lived off the land. My, my father was a hunter and fisherman. He's an Inuk, an Inuit man. And my mother is a settler. Her ancestors came from England. And anyway, in our fishing village, uh, like there was only three houses, um, but that was heaven on earth. We, we did everything together as a family. We uh, went hunting and fishing together. Dad had his huge boat that we would go uh, fishing and we'd go bear picking together as a family. The whole family would do everything together. Uh, I remember just a little toddler, like, walking miles, but we didn't complain. We just explored and enjoyed along the way, and it was just pure heaven on earth. But then we had to uh, move to Nain, where it's my home community, and it's uh, I will serve eventually. Um, but we had to go to Nain to go to school, and I found that that's when our family fell apart. Oh. Uh, our parents um, neglected us, and um, mom would leave us in the house by ourselves. And two abusers used to come in, and, and I was abused, sexually abused. And there was no love and nurturing after, at that time. Um, so I became, like I just turned inward. I remember... From kindergarten to grade eight, I never said a word in school because I just turned inward. I, I didn't want to trust adults anymore. Um, I became very, very shy, um, had very low self-esteem, and um, I remember I had child migraines from kindergarten to grade five. Even as a child, like I was only five years old and when I was abused, and even as that child, um, I felt so guilty. I knew it was wrong. I felt so guilty. I felt so guilty that child migraines. And looking back, um, I remember I used to cry very easily, and like I never ever told my parents what happened to me. And, and um, I could hear my mother saying, if, like when my siblings like fought me, made me cry, I could hear my mom saying, don't make Petey cry because she's going to cry all day again. But looking back, I know it was because of the turmoil I went through. And then at the age of 14, I was raped, and I never told a soul until I was like 30 years old. Just imagine like 14 years old and I'd be looking at my stomach to see if I was going to get pregnant. Uh, carrying that burden all by myself, not telling a soul. And then at 17, I was in high school. We had to move away for high school, uh, residential school. Uh, there was an attempted rape and that was more scarier than the rape itself because I really saw evil come into his face. I really did see his face change with an evil look on his face. But I escaped at that time. Um, so all these things that happened to me, I, um, I just had it blocked. I had it blocked for years. I didn't think about it. 
I didn't dream about it, I just blocked it. Um, but do you remember in the early 80s when Mount Kasha came out on the news? Uh, when I saw that on the news, uh, I had flashbacks and I couldn't stop thinking about it. Um, um, if you don't know about the Mount Cashel incident, it's when um, uh, the priests molested the young boys. So anyway, um, at that time, in the early 80s, I, uh, I had this job, and they, were, uh, they knew that we needed uh, to grow as a person because um, a lot of people in the lab, there a lot of us grew up the same way, so a lot of us have low self-esteem, so we were giving workshops. So at that time, I found out that I really needed uh, to do a lot of personal growth. And it took me 20 years just to work on my personal growth. Uh, that's how shy and how I just turned inward. That's how shy I was. So when I start to work on myself, um, I, uh, I also started to sing. Um, and I knew that uh, it would eventually help me out of being shy. So the first time that I ever had to sing in public, oh, it was so difficult for me. It, uh, I used to get up there and, and I, I'd say to myself, why am I doing this? Like, it's so difficult for me. But I, I kept on doing it. And so that's why I'm able to be up here today and speak. Um, that's why I'm able to be in public because of that singing. But I know looking back, it was like a stepping stone to where I'm at today. Um, I had to do a lot of healing and I had to do a lot, uh, even though I tried counseling, it seemed like, like nobody can do the work for you. You have to do the work by yourself. Mm -hmm. So I started um, by trial and error, um, trying to find healing for my wounds, for my wounded heart. Um, so the first thing, after I heard about the uh, Mount Cashel incident, I, uh, I went to visit my minister. I, I spoke to him, but I still, so I had to go to Nain. I, I said to myself, I had to go to have an emergency family meeting with my family. I, I knew I really needed that because like, I couldn't sleep. I, it, this was just constantly on my mind. So I went to Nain, I had that meeting, and my mother was there, uh, some of my siblings and, and counselors, um, and I just poured everything. I just told him everything. Um, and I said to my mom, um, you're my mother and I love you. And I, and I tried to hug her and, 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 and she was just still like a statue where she also went to residential school. Like, uh, I just, she didn't know how to do like show love or nurturing. So, um, anyway, the next day, she brought my four sisters, she brought a little plaque, and it said, if ever a day goes by that I don't say I love you, know always that I do. And when I started to really work on my issues and really look, looking at myself, um, I... I just lost track, um, but I, what I had to do was I had to forgive my mother, I had to forgive my abusers, and that's the only way that you heal. That's the only way you begin to heal, you have to forgive. Um, so were you already a Christian, so you had given your heart to the Lord before you went into this counseling? Um, like at that time, like I, um, like I, I used to go to church, and when I was age fourteen, uh, I, I was in the junior choir. But um, when I went to my pastor, like um, so, I went to him for counseling. But really, for myself, I had to, I had to just really work on myself. So um, 
So the next thing I realized that all the hurts goes to your heart. Um, and I had to do a lot of affirmations and say good things to my, so uh, I used to pray in the morning, at night. So after my prayer at night, uh, I, I talked to my heart. I, I told it what it, I needed to hear. And what I needed to hear was, I love you, I'm going to take care of you. And I did that for three nights. Like, I, I didn't know how long it was going to take. I didn't know what was going to happen, but I just kept doing that. But on the third night, I felt my heart like it was warm, I, and I could feel my whole heart. And in the Bible, it talks about, like, I have a hardening heart, and God's going to give you uh, um, a heart of flesh. Mm. So I really felt my heart became soft. My heart became warm. So I know, I knew that God was helping me, but there was always something missing. Like, what else do I have to do? Um, so eventually, um, uh, there were other things. There's so much. I, there, I can't include everything. There, there's so much. But um, I became depressed because I couldn't find, even though I was on my healing journey, I, was, I wasn't totally healed. I knew something was missing. I knew there was a void. I, I knew that there was a void. So uh, one day, like, my ex-husband, he, uh, he travels a lot. He travels, like, every week he'd be gone. And I used to feel so alone. I used to be so lonely. So um, one weekend while he was home, I said, uh, I really need to go. We need to go camping. I need to go out in a tent. I need to just get away. And I cried all the way um, to their tent that we had set up. And it was set up next to the water. And I was so depressed. At that time, I was depressed for two years. I wanted healing so badly. And I couldn't find that happiness. I couldn't find that joy that I was so, so depressed. So in the, in the tent, I just cried myself to sleep. But before I went to sleep, I was thinking... I just want to walk in the water and drown. Like, uh, I really had suicide thoughts that night. Uh, I was so, so depressed. Um, but sometime during the night, I saw little sparkles. There was about three little sparkles. Um, and then there was this invisible being that um, hugged me. And, and when he hugged me, um, like, the suicide thoughts just left in... Um, in that hug was love and peace, and it was so good. And, and I, I was so, so happy. So when I went to seminary, they told me, like, that must have been the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit is the comforter. Yes. So uh, even though that happened, there was still a void. And I was just, I'd say to myself, like, it took, like, several years for all this to happen. And I'd say, like, what do I have to do now? Once I, uh, because, like, I just to take a mental note of myself, like, I'm not going to do this anymore, because I became uh, a very negative person, where I was filled with uh, anger, resentment of the, the abuse that happened to me. I, I was jealous. And every negative thing I was, I was so negative. Um, so, in talking about that, I'd like to... Um, describe uh, another healing exercise that I did that got rid of all my negativity. Um, I had to sing in St. John's, Newfoundland. I was invited to a youth conference to sing. And so uh, there was this other lady, uh, Sarah Anala. You might have heard of her. She works in the prisons. Um, so she, we were talking, and she said, sounds like you need to do a grief letter. So I wrote a grief letter on my two abusers and my mother, and that's how also helped me to um, uh, release all that was in me, uh, what they have done to me. So the next day, we, I wrote the letters, and uh, I read them to her. She said a prayer for me, and we burned them. The next day, like I could feel all the negative uh, energy just coming out of me. 
everything negative that was in me, I, I could feel it. I really felt it coming out of me. And when you're really ready for healing, you will experience something like that. It, it was so good to have that release of all that negativity that was in me. Um, so anyway, um, years later, uh, me and my ex-husband, we, we go caribou hunting. On my birthday, January, we were in a tent, like January, January, it was so cold, like I had a park around, snow pants, in sleeping bag, it was so cold, but I just love it out in a tent. Um, so it was my birthday, January 20th, 2003. I woke up in the night, and from here, from my waist up, there was light all around me, and I could feel that peace and love again, and I was just basking in it. Oh, it was so good. Um, and it's like um, all my wounds were healed, and I knew that Jesus came into our heart. So I know like that void that was missing, that was Jesus. So he came into my heart uh, that night. And so when I went home and my husband had to leave again uh, for on the coast, I was, this was Resurrection Sunday. I finally, I finally felt whole. I finally felt cleansed. So I put on a CD by Celine Dion, I'm Alive. I really felt alive. I was alive in Christ. It was so, so good. Even though all that happens, there's still things going to happen in your life and that um, get you down. And so, but I'm at a point in my life where. Resurrection Sunday is happening again. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I have someone who I've met in my life who, because God sends people to you uh, to bring joy into your life. I have this guy who, who is willing to come to me, come with me to serve in Nain because my ex-husband, when I had to serve in um, I hope till I was ordained uh, September 25, 2011. And the next day, I went on a boat to go to Hope till uh, to serve. Uh, but my husband wouldn't come with me. Um, in between everything, um, God shows me. Well, in an instant, he shows me things. Uh, I've had two visions while I'm awake and awesome dreams. Um, like, there's so much to tell you, uh, you know, that I can't time. tell all of it. Uh, um, but I'll just nice. include this. Uh, the guy that I um, have met, he's willing to come with me uh, to Nain. So I have the joy of the Lord again. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You won't be alone. Hallelujah. Never alone. Jesus is good. Jesus is good. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord for sharing, sharing your stories with us today. New life in Christ. Pastor Ron. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. I had somebody tell me, they said, you're not going to preach long, are you? I'm going to give you a few thoughts before we close the service. See, Christianity is not a blind faith. In fact, it's the only religion based on evidence. Thank you. 
That's why the resurrection of Jesus Christ is the greatest news of all. The news of Jesus Christ coming to earth and dying on a cruel cross is not just a great story. It's a fact. And the resurrection is a fact. Christianity is based on the fact that Jesus came. I'll say it like this. Jesus saves, Jesus heals, Jesus delivers, and Jesus is Lord. It's, it's been recorded. It's been recorded by four independent authors with each gospel account accurately reporting even the smallest details in harmony. I could give you all kinds of scriptures, but I won't take the time right now. If you want them, I can give them to you after. There are many eyewitnesses, even after his resurrection, Christ appeared to a wide, to a wide variety of people, including a group of about 500 people all at once. You can see that in, in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 3 to 9. Accounts of the resurrection include inconvenient truths that one, that one would, uh, it could not be a fabricated story. In fact, like a story like the women who were the first eyewitnesses. And in that day, a woman's testimony was not, uh, was not really solid evidence. But you can see that there were women that went to that, to that uh, uh, graveside. You know, do you realize that that the death and resurrection of Jesus is a fulfillment of over 300 prophecies? Many hundreds of years before. Do you realize that even Jesus' own half-brother, James, was converted from a skeptic to a disciple? His brothers were skeptics, but James became a wonderful disciple and a real leader of the church after he rose from the dead. See, Jesus appeared to even James. You see the radically transformed lives of the disciples. Three days after fleeing the crucifixion in fear, the disciples were suddenly willing to die a martyr's death. They had nothing to gain by concocting some kind of a story. Ultimately, Jesus' uh, death and resurrection split history in half, something that cannot be said of any other world religion. We have B.C. and we have A.D. In fact, the resurrection gave believers the indwelling of the Spirit, and it separated a old covenant to a new covenant. Not only do you have the testimony and the eyewitnesses in the Bible, but we have the testimonies from people from every century ever since that day that effects of the resurrection of their lives and we heard testimony this morning. Jesus saves. Jesus heals. Jesus delivers. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What, how do we know he's risen? Because he's made new creatures in Christ Jesus. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. Not only that, he's taken us from darkness into his marvelous light. You cannot do this with a dead God. Jesus is not just the means to salvation. He is our salvation. He is real. He came from heaven to save us. And he wants every one of us to experience the life, the hope, and the promise of eternity that can only be found in him. I would suggest that you take some time. Those who are watching online and those that are here in this room, we take some time to reflect on the resurrection of Christ today. 
and ask yourself the question that we've asked these three. How has the resurrection affected you? What would your story be like? Imagine what it would be like in seeing our Savior face to face to spend eternity with him. To enjoy his presence. Are you going to be one? But until then, my heart will go on singing. Until then, I'm going to carry on. Until that day, my heart will go on singing. Until that day, I'll carry on. But I will not carry on within my own strength. And you don't need to carry on either in your own strength. You cannot do it on your own. Jesus said it like this. Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. But you need to invite him to be with you, to believe in you. Well. Until then, let us praise God for the evidence he has given us of the resurrection and the one who gave his life for us. I would like to close this service with a song. Thank you, Lord Jesus. story your faithfulness has walked beside me the winter storms made way for spring in every season from where I'm standing I see the evidence of
I see the evidence of your goodness. All over my life, all over my life, I see your promises in I pray for those that may be watching online or even here in this room and they don't have the evidence in their heart that they belong to you. I ask, Lord, that you would soften their heart, that they will turn to you. In Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, for those that are in this room that have that evidence. They have the seal of your spirit. They know that you've forgiven them of their sin. So I thank you, Lord, that you will continue to make yourself real to them on this Resurrection Sunday. In Jesus' name. And because he lives with me, I can face tomorrow. you. May his face shine on you and may he bring into you abundance of peace, that peace that will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. Best thing you can do on this Resurrection Sunday is surrender your life completely to him. Jesus saves, Jesus heals, Jesus delivers, and Jesus is Lord.